Hey everyone, what's up? Over the course of the next handful of video quick tips over the next few months, we're going to be dissecting jQuery, but in small chunks. So we'll take a look at the source, take out little chunks of code, and figure, figure out exactly what's going on underneath the hood, so to speak. And then we'll take that code once we understand it, and we'll figure out how to use it to our advantage to extend jQuery or use it in our own projects. Okay, so the first one we're going to take a look at in this video is filter. So the first thing we need to do is take a look at the jQuery source. I'm going to use code.jQuery.com slash jQuery dash latest. There's a bunch of different ones. And this is the uncompressed jQuery source. So if you've never looked at this before, don't worry. Uh, it's very, very complicated, but if you look at it in chunks like we're going to, hopefully it'll be a little bit easier to take in. So we're going to look at filters. It's accessed via the expressions, so expression.filters. There we go. Let's take a look at hidden. Okay, first let's figure out how we use this in our project. So I'm going to enter TextMate, and within our project, let's just quickly get set up. Okay, and we need to be running jQuery, so import jQuery. And next we need just a bit of data to work with. So I will add, I don't know, a paragraph tag, say P, and just some generic lorem text. All right, good deal. So let's say we want to get the paragraph tag and get the very first one. I'm sorry, not the paragraph tag. We'll say paragraph hidden dot text is hidden. Okay, this is a filter. It is the hidden filter, and what this does is it grabs all paragraphs on the page, and then it filters through them and determines whether they are visible on the page or not. So if you were thinking how you would implement this, your first thought might be to simply check its display. If the display is block or inline or something like that, then we know it's on the page. But actually, it turns out we need to do a little bit more than that. So what the jQuery source does is it determines if there is a width and a height to the element, and if it is, it must be on the page. So let's figure out how this is implemented. By the way, there's also the inverse, which would be visible. Okay. So let's go back to the source, and here's where it is, jQuery.expression.filters.hidden. And that's equal to a function, and that receives the, the node, the element. In our case, that would receive the paragraph element. First, it creates three vari variables, width, height, and skip. Width is equal to the width of the element in question. Height is the height, offset height. And skip, what is this right here? So as it turns out, we can't use this technique with table rows. Table rows will not work that way when there's a width of zero and a height. They can still be labeled as visible. So what they do here is this is equal to a Boolean, a true or false. So it's checking, is the node name a table row? If so, skip will be equal to true, otherwise it'll be equal to false. Okay, let's do our first check. Is the width zero and the height is zero and it's not a table row? We're using the ternary operator. If so, return true because hidden, it is hidden, so we're going to return true. That element will then be added to the jQuery collection. Okay, next, otherwise, else, is the width greater than zero and the height, meaning is it on the page but it's still not a table row? return false because it is not hidden, so we're returning false, in which case it's not added to the collection. And then finally, we're doing one more, and this is to target, this is in the case that it is a table row, and in that case, all we do is check to see if its display is in fact none. So we say jQuery.CurrentCSS, we pass in the element name, in that case it would be the table row, and we check to see if its display is equal to none. And that's really all there is to it. It's a very, very simple but helpful function. And that's exactly what's going on here. So now whenever you write this, you know exactly what is happening underneath the hood. And what's even cooler here is we can use this to our advantage now, now that we know how to use filters. So let's take a look. Anytime we are extending jQuery, we have to use uh, jQuery.extend, like so. And I'm just going to paste this in. That's going to be equal to a function like so. So we could do it like that, or we could do it as a comma. And we'll say filters, like that. And this way we are adding an object, that way we could add multiple filters if we want. And we'll use this method. Uh, the first one, let's do something simple to get us started. We'll call it block. It can be equal to a function that's going to receive the element again. 
and let's figure out exactly how we want to use this. So we'll say get all paragraph tags that are block level elements. Granted, this is a bit silly, but you get the idea. And then we'll text our block level, something like that. Uh, paragraphs are inherently block, but who knows? They could be different. So we'll say block, and how can we determine if an element uh, has its display set to block? Okay, in that case, we have to return something because we have to determine yes or no should it be added to the collection. So I'll simply return wrap the element in jQuery and determine if the CSS is a block, and that should work. So if it is, we'll get the text and we'll set it to our block level, and there we go. In this case, though, let's go ahead and change it so we can overwrite that. And we'll simply say p display inline in this case. Now let's go back, and it's not going because it was inline, so that element was not added, or that series of elements, however many there are, is not added to the collection, in which case the text isn't changed. Very cool. So now let's take this a step further and do another one. So I'll comment that out. And this one will do, uh, let's say, has data. So if you're not familiar, we can attach data to uh, variables and things like that. So if you've ever added a class of some important data to your page because you maybe needed to access it with PHP or JavaScript, something like that, instead, we can take advantage of the data method. So what data is, it's an object, and we can simply just add properties and values to it. So we can do something like uh, p, get that first one, and data, and we can add anything we want. So info is value. So now this data has a key, a name of info, and a value of value. So this paragraph right here now has data associated with it. So what we're going to do is create a new filter. And this filter will, will allow us to determine if there is data associated with the element. So let's first uh, get all paragraphs on the page, but only get the ones that do have data associated with it as data. And that's how we're going to ultimately use it. So let's figure this out. We have this method. How can we figure out with an element if there is data attached to it? Okay, well, we know we can do data equals jQuery lm data. So let's console.log and see exactly what's going on here. So let's go ahead and open our project. Let's open this up, refresh the page, and we can see the data. It's an object, and it contains the info property that we created and the value. It's very helpful. So, for example, what if I get rid of this? What will happen when we log data? Now we can see it's still an object, but it's an empty object. So that's what we need to figure out. Is the data object empty or not? All right, a couple ways we can do this. So if you're new to jQuery, you might think the first way we could do it would be something like, um, we'd say for var i in jQuery lm data. And then we could simply say something like return true, return false. Okay, what's going on here? We're saying for var i, when you say, when you go into an object, i will be equal to the name. So in this case, i would be info, and then it goes through again, and if there's another one, it's equal to that. So we're saying for var i in element data, if that returns true and there is something, then we'll return true because we know there is a property or method within that object. Otherwise, and that will return us from the, from the method. Otherwise, if that doesn't run, we know it's empty. So we're going to return false. Now, over the course of, I'm sorry, speaking of regular objects, this isn't good enough. But for the data object, it'll be just fine. What it doesn't take into account is things like um, methods or properties added via prototype. But in this case, we can get away with this. Now, we can take it a step further. And if you need to write a code like that, it's probably certain that jQuery has that for us. So we can always open up jQuery and search for it. And let's say jQuery dot is empty object. So now we just need to figure out where this is declared. So I'm just going to filter through here a couple times. And you know what? We probably can't access that way. Let's do empty object like that. And I bet we can find it that way. There we go, is empty object. So you see here, these are methods of the jQuery namespace. So we can do jQuery.isArray, is empty object. There's a lot of helpful ones. There's some cool ones that you probably never used before, like node name. You can pass in the element and the value that you hope it is, and it'll return whether that's correct. 
Anyway, so let's take a look. Is empty object and check it out. It's pretty much the exact code that we wrote. Is empty object and it creates for var name in the object and it returns false. So it returns false because it's not an empty object. Otherwise, it returns true. So what we have here is kind of the opposite, but that's okay. So we can get rid of our code and use what jQuery already has for us. jQuery that is empty object, and we need to pass in the element. And if you ever need to know, you can see here it accepts the object. So let's make sure we pass in jQuery wrapping element dot data, like so. But remember, this is empty object. We want to determine if it's not because if it has data, then it's going to return true. So I'm going to negate that, like so. And that should do it. So return, is it an empty object, or is it an object? And then pass in our data object. So let's try this out. I'm going to go into the preview. Has data, because there has been data attached. Let's comment this out, and this time it's not going to have data attached, and it runs just like that. So we wrote code, but jQuery already did it for us, and you may not even know that that method was available to you. So that's the extent of what I wanted to show you in this video quick tip. We learned how to extend jQuery. We learned how to search through the jQuery source to uh, not reinvent the wheel, so to speak. And then I'll show you one last trick here. You see jQuery.expression.filters. We can even shorten this more. If you've ever seen this code before, this is the exact same thing. And in fact, all it is is an alias for jQuery.expression.filters. And to prove it to you, let's go in here and search for it. Uh, let's try it like this. Let's search through here. There it is, jQuery.expression, colon, and you see that's just an alias for jQuery.expression.filter. So you can use either that you want, though this seems to be pretty common, so this will work just fine. And I hope you learned something. In the next video, we'll take another chunk of the jQuery source, dismantle it, and figure out how to make our code better. Bye.